without the training, you will never lead in the things of God. No student goes against his teacher and passes the exam. This seminar focuses on training you in a way that God can use you. So let's talk about respecting your seniors. If we look at the story of um, um, Esau and Jacob, who was a senior? Esau. By how many years did he senior Jacob? This will shock some of you. By how many years did he senior Jacob? All this, uh, the older one, the older one, the older one. How many? If uh, Jacob wants to ask Jacob, we say, by the way, how many years did you used to senior me? Praise the Lord. Few minutes, minutes, and heaven registered him as a senior. Earth registered him as a senior. Are you hearing me? They were not twins. They were senior. Listen, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let's go to Genesis. Let's even listen to what God himself said about it. Amen. Say, I am blessed. I am blessed. Genesis 25. Genesis 25. Amen. I want us to read from verse 21. Genesis 25 from verse 21. Now Isaac pleaded with the Lord for his wife because she was what? Barren. And the Lord granted his plea and Rebekah, his wife, conceived. Verse 22. But the children struggled together within her. And she said, if all is well, why am I like this? So she went to inquire of the Lord. She went to ask, you know, um, she was having a lot of trouble in her womb. It appears that something is not well. You know, you go through certain trauma in pregnancy. But the one of Rebecca was excessive because she was now saying, what, what, why am I going through these challenges? What is the difficulty? And then the Bible said, he went to inquire of the Lord. He didn't go to see a doctor. She didn't go to see a doctor. She went to do what? Inquire of the Lord. Verse 23, and the Lord said to her, and the Lord said to her, Two nations are in your womb. Is that in your Bible? Two peoples shall be separated from your, separated from your body. One people shall be stronger than the other. And the older shall serve the younger. But they are twins. Is that in your Bible? And the older shall what? The but they are what? So there is nobody on planet Earth at the same age. You need to have been born almost a seconds the same. What separates them is seconds. But God registered it in his book that whoever that comes at first, I'm just trying to give you an example of some of the things we will deal with in CDI, character development classes. Because many of you, you don't respect one another simply because we are brothers and sisters. And you bring a problem upon yourself because you walk contrary to the word of God. God registered Esau as a senior, but his covenant was with the younger one. But nevertheless, Esau was the senior. And by the time that Esau sold his birthright, it was established that he ceases to be the firstborn with God. That transaction was honored and established with God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, there's something that God put in the law, in the book of Leviticus. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Let us go to the book of Leviticus. Leviticus 19. Leviticus 19. Verse 32. Amen. Amen. <laughs> 
Leviticus 19 verse 32. Are you there? Oh. You know, somebody said to me one time in Germany, he said, why do people stand up when pastor comes in? He was talking about actually the practice in Nigeria. When pastor comes in, you know, you stand up to welcome your pastor or even when he ministers, you stand up. And they were, they were arguing, why do people stand up? This is not, this is, uh, this is uh, what do they call it? Uh, worshiping men of God. Don't listen to those that are ignorant to and destroy your destiny. The person that's saying that to you probably don't read the Bible and don't understand the Bible. There are things that God has spoken into his word. If you obey it, you will be blessed. If you disobey it, you will hurt yourself. Are we there? Read verse 32, everybody. Read it again, verse 32. Is that your Bible? Let me read for you in the New Living Translation. Amen? He says, stand up in the presence of the elderly. New Living Translation. He says, stand up in the what? presence of the elderly and show respect for the aged. Fear your God, I am the Lord. So if you don't respect elders, you don't fear God. Don't listen to fools and mess up your life. So when we do character development, the reason why it's character development, we assume you don't have it. (laughs) Amen? For instance, with this scripture alone, you will never insult and a senior person. Amen? You will never insult a senior person. It's not how many years the person used to senior you that's the issue. The fact the person is your senior. You can see the case of Esau and Jacob. Use that. And so, if you are 21 and somebody is 20. 22 and a half, or 21 and a half. That's your elder. In the new translation, when it says the elder and the aged, the Bible tried to bring it that it's not only in age that we are talking about. An elder can refer to your senior in the spirit, in the ministry. Then the aged is talking about by years. You need to get it right. Praise the Lord. You need to get it right. He says, stand up in the presence of the elderly and show respect for the aged. Anybody that seniors you, for instance, this is deaconess, this is pastor, amen. You owe them the respect when they are talking to you, you stand. That's what the Bible says. In this case, your age does not count. Whether you are 90 years as long as you are a member, and one is a deaconess and one is a pastor, when they are talking to you, you should be on your feet. I'm not the one that says it. You may not like it. But then, the things you like have not moved you forward. <laughs> and praise the Lord. Oh, the things you like to do have not moved you forward. And here we are. I'm about to tell you what will move you forward. You pray so hard. You pray so well but you've not moved far. But if you make the changes and you pray less, you can go further. Praise the Lord. God said, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. They are destroyed for lack of knowledge. They are destroyed for lack of knowledge. You may not like it, (laughs) but that's the word of God. Amen. Amen. And so when they're talking about character character development, we are believing that the world has robbed you of your character, Christian character. The world has robbed you of it. And so our purpose in these seminars, our purpose 
in the Alpha Media is to bring you to a place of knowledge, is to bring you to a place of revelation so that you can move forward as a believer, move forward as a Christian. And so you can do exploits. It is written, those that know their God, they shall be what? They will be strong and they will do what? Exploit. But that is through knowledge. That is through knowledge. And I want you to take full advantage of this training. I want you to equip yourself in this training. What I'm only emphasizing to you today in this class is the need for you to be trained. The need for you to be trained. For you to take this training serious. I just gave you an example concerning respect and the word of God. I can, hmm, you know what? Let me show you something again. Shout hallelujah. First Timothy chapter 5. First Timothy chapter 5. Hallelujah. Uh, from New Living Translation, if you can. First Timothy chapter 5. Are we there? Shout hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Verse 1. What does it say? Do not rebuke an older man. Right? Good. Let me read it from New Living Translation. It says, Never speak harshly to an older man. Never. Rebuke is a different thing altogether. It's even stronger. But New Living Translation brings it in our everyday mistakes. Everyday mistakes. Everyday mistakes. I call it mistakes. But it's actually everyday sin. And people hardly recognize it. People hardly repent of it. Amen. He says, never speak. Never speak harshly. To a what? To an older man. But, uh, uh, but appeal to him respectfully as you would to your own father. That's the word of God. He says, but appeal to him respectfully. Appeal to him. So even if you want to make a point, there should be a way you make that point. You make that point with humility. Shout hallelujah. I am tempted to show you more things in this area because many of us have problems in this area. Not knowing that you are going contrary to the word of God. Amen. And the reason why I'm giving you this example is so that you can stir up your interest. If you look at your level of ignorance and foolishness, it will make you say, that, ah, this message, this teaching, I will not play with it. Because in it, your life will change. For instance, if you know the way you've been acting, at the end of this meeting, you go before God in prayer and say, Lord, I have not been respectful. I want you to forgive me. I want you to forgive me. I want to enjoy your blessings. I don't want to suffer. I don't, I don't want to be lawless. And God sees you as contrite and of a broken spirit. And God said, this is the type of people I like. When you hear the word of God, the word of God pricks your conscience. The word of God pricks your heart. And then you go back in repentance. And you go back to ask God to forgive you. Praise the Lord. So, I, I want you to equip yourself. Equip yourself not to miss these classes. And to take it seriously and put yourself in it. In it. Because many people are missing it all. Not because of the devil, but because of their ignorance. And God holds you responsible for your actions. Because God has said we should study from the word of God. If you fail to study, that's your problem. But thank God that here you have a teacher, you have a pastor, you have a mentor. It's up to you to accept him or not. Amen. Amen. And what you, do not, what you do not accept cannot accelerate you. What you do not accept cannot accelerate you. 
I want to show you something again that will shock you. Job chapter 32. And don't ask me, Pastor, why did you go and fish out this scripture? I didn't fish it out. It's in the word. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Job 32. Say, I am blessed. This is about the time the friends of Job visited him. And uh, of course, everybody was talking. Amen? Something happened. Somebody wanted to speak. Remember, they came to visit Job in his calamity. And so they all were speaking. But a man called Elihu, who also came with them, wanted to speak. He wanted to say something. Let's look at what he said. Verse 4, Job 32. Verse 4. Now, because they were years older than he. Is that your Bible? Yes, because they were years older than who? Yes. Elihu. Amen? I will show you. Now, because they were years older than he, Elihu had waited to speak to Job. He had waited. He says, now, because they were years older than he, Elihu had waited to speak to Job. Verse 5. When Elihu saw that there was no answer in the mouth of these three men, his wrath was what? Arose. Is right? Yes, Verse 6. So, Elihu, the son of Barasha, the Buzite, answered and said, I am young in years. Is that in your Bible? I am young in years, and you are very old. Therefore, I was afraid, and I dared not declare my opinion to you. <laughs> Is that in your Bible? He said, because you were more senior than I. And because even though what you could have said was not right, what you said was not right. And I have opinion about what you could have said. I know the right thing to be said. He said, I was afraid. I was afraid. And dare not declare my opinion to you. Verse 7, I said, I said, age should speak. And multitude of years should teach wisdom. You know, you know, oh, oh, praise the Lord. It's not everything. You are elders speak, you should resp- reply to. No. Yeah, read the Bible. Sometimes you should swallow your opinion. No. Sometimes you should swallow your opinion. But you know, these are the things. Remember that when you come to God's family, God is the omnipotent, omnipresent, omniscient. So if you believe that God knows all things, you shouldn't make a point in the presence of God. Amen? Leave God to sort out his things. I love one thing Pastor Chris said. Pastor Chris said that the church is inherently built to solve their own problem. Pastor Chris said that the church has been built in such a way that the church can always solve all the problems in, in the church, which is true. Outsiders don't solve the problem in the government. It's those that are in government that solve the problem in the government, isn't it? And so the same way the church. And if you read the scriptures, when your elder is talking to you, you should be quiet. You should be quiet. Your opinion should be suspended. Sometimes you are trying to prove you know it better. I remember the meeting I had with Pastor Chris. He called me after service. He wanted to talk to me about sound. And there was a guy that was working for me at that time that I, I told to come. That was already a privilege to carry him along to go and see Pastor Chris. And then as Pastor Chris was talking to us, I was paying attention. I was saying, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And the things Pastor Chris was, I was saying, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And this guy, when I looked, I saw him, he was a little bit smiling. Smiling. And then when Pastor Chris had finished, I am the one that's supposed to speak. I am his boss. I brought him. I said, yes, sir. And I said, we're about to go. He said, uh, he raised his hand. He said, actually, sir. 
He said, uh, those things he said will not work. I just looked at him. I said, sorry, sir, sir, we're going to work on what you said. Pastor Chris laughed. I'm winning. I'm winning. And I dragged him. I said, what, what are you doing? He said, bro, you, that thing will not work. I said, I brought you. Don't you think I know that that thing will not work? I said, I brought you work for me. Praise the Lord. I am to pay him for that job. And I know it will not work. This is what Elihu was explaining. I stood before the prophet of God. I stood there to listen. Whether he's right or wrong, I'm there to listen. I'm there to listen. And so when he laughed, he said it will not work. That's where I was rebuking him strongly. That was the last time he walked with me. See, today, he never walked for me. Never walked. That week, actually, he was fired. It's as simple as that. Even though that what Pastor Kim was saying will not work, but I was following the scripture, even though I've not been taught by this, but I've been trained by family discipline, by tradition, that when my elder, when my senior is talking, I should keep quiet. Praise the Lord. Even if it doesn't work, there is a way to appeal my opinion to him, which is what the Elihu said here. There is a way. Now, later, I said, do what pastor said. Everybody looked at me and said, but it won't work. I said, do what pastor said. I know that what pastor said will not work. But you see, if you are led by the spirit, all things will work together for your good. Are you hearing me? So we did what pastor said. Pastor said we should spread speakers all over the auditorium so that everybody will hear. But I know that that will produce feedback. I know that that will not work. But the man of God, who is a commander, even watching so far my spirit has said it, I must make sure that it works. And so what did you do? We put the speakers there. As he said, we put all the speakers and I went to the sound engineer because whatever you put, you control it in the mixer. And I said to the sound engineer, please, this speaker kill the volume, this one kill the volume, this one kill the volume, this one lower it, this one. I gave specific instructions on what to do. And then we did it. And as we did it, after service, pastor was happy. Pastor sent a message to Pastor Yemisi that the sound was very good today. He said, you see? You see, he said, the, the instruction he gave to them, that it worked. Praise the Lord. Listen to me. Listen to me. I would rather be obedient than to be right. And that's why many of you miss it. You are looking to be right because you know it. You think you know it. You want to make a point that you know it. By strength shall no man prevail. That's what Jesus said. Jesus said, without me, you can do nothing. And that is why you need to be trained to understand that you are, the Bible says, woe to him that depends on the arm of flesh. Cursed is the man that trusts in the arm of flesh. Cursed is the man that depends on his skills, his knowledge, his wisdom in the things of God. If you depend on your flesh, if you depend on your ability, if you depend on what you know, the Bible says, cursed are you. It do not work. You know why? God resists the proud. When you put your trust in the arm of flesh, you are proud. This seminar will bring breakthrough to your life. If you will break down your pride. This seminar will bring what? Breakthroughs into your life if you will break down your pride. My job is to communicate to you the cheapest way for you to be a success as a Christian. The easiest way to be a success. Your way has not taken you far in life. Look at it. Where are you now? Ask yourself, where are you now? Amen. God said, your ignorance will make me withdraw from you. He said, because you have rejected knowledge, I have also rejected you from being what? Priest. You can sing, you can sing the song, we are real priesthood. 
uh, a holy nation. Um, how do you put singing? Song? A chosen generation. You've been singing it. And yet you've not been chosen anywhere. Amen. <laughs> through knowledge, the just shall be delivered. Not through prayers. Not through fasting. Shout hallelujah. This seminar, as you enroll and as you participate and as you give yourself to learn, I have no doubt, I have no doubt that your life will be transformed. <laughs>